Howdy folks, Spencer here, and today I want to go through and give my event campaign 5 recommendations. As always, chapters are listed down below for those of you that want to skip ahead. For those of you not familiar with the event campaign, the event campaign is a year-long event in which you can go through, participate in various events throughout the year, and you can earn some of the endgame ships or premium items that would traditionally cost you quite a bit of money to obtain. If you want to learn more about how the event campaigns work or how to go through and quickly get progression, even if you're starting out at event four or five, then I will have a video linked down below in the description that details everything you need to know about how the event campaign works. The next thing I want to just go through and remind you guys about is the triple test server. If you are playing STO on PC and you have an ARC or ARC linked account, then you can copy your character over to the triple test server and try out a bunch of the different event campaign options before you pick whatever you want to pick on live. So the only limitation with the triple is that the C store is disabled there. And what that means is you can't test any T6 C store coupons. So if you go, if you're wanting to get the coupons from the event campaign, that is the only thing you can't test on triple because the C store is just simply disabled there. So if you want to copy a character over to Tribble, they do have a guide over on the support page for the game, and I'll include a link to this down below. Once you've got your account set up to, to copy over to Tribble, all you have to do is go onto your character that you're wanting to copy. So I'm going to copy over my casual SAB character, and I'm going to make sure that the event campaign box is actually sitting in my inventory and make sure it's sitting up at like the top left of your inventory. The bottom part of your inventory will sometimes get cut off when you copy the character over. Okay, so I have the event campaign box in my inventory here and I'm going to go back to that art page. I'm going to select casual SAB and I'm going to copy that over to Tribble. It'll take a couple seconds to load, but you can copy the character over more than one time if you want. And if you have several different ships that you're wanting to try out, you can just keep copying the box over and over and over again. So I just copied it over and that's going to be the casual sab listed as 49 and 50 that are the two that I just copied over. So you can go through grab the event campaign reward box and just toss that into your account bank and just repeat as many times as you want until you have as many of the event campaign boxes over here as you want to test. So by doing this, if you have a bunch of different lockbox ships that you're interested in, you know, a bunch of different things from that premium E6 option, you could copy this box over 10 times and move them all over to a single character on Tribble and basically just go through and try out all the ships that you're interested in. So I've just copied two over. I could have copied another 20 over if I really wanted. Uh, you could go through and literally test every single premium ship if you really wanted to. If you want to copy your character over that many times, you could. But as you can see here, I can just go to the account bank now, grab these event campaign boxes. Again, these are both you know, the, the event campaign five ones here. And I could select the premium T6 starship pack here or the lobby if that's what, what you're wanting to try out. But I can grab this T6 box as many times as I want. And if I want to test the Excelsior 2, I can grab that. If I want to test, you know, the, the Kirk Temporal Heavy Battle Cruiser, well, I can go through, grab that, try that out. So if you're on PC, that is a very nice thing that you have access to, and you should take advantage of it if you're undecided as to what specific ship you're wanting to go after. Because even though, you know, I have some good recommendations later in the video here, your specific play style may not match the, the recommendations. You may find that, you know, I really like the inquiry, but you may try the inquiry out over here on Tribble and realize you just don't like how the ship handles or the Vaudoir Juggernaut. So, you know, copying over to Tribble is always very nice for being able to make sure that the, the option is actually something that is going to work for your specific play style. 
Next up, I want to go through and take a look at the three different prize options we have. Those three options are 1500 Lobby Crystals, two tier six coupons for the C store, or a single premium starship of your choice. So I'm going to be taking a look at these in a bit more detail. If you want to skip ahead, again, remember there are chapters listed down below. The first prize option here is 1500 Lobby Crystals. And the main appeal for this is the just insane cost to actually get Lobby Crystals in the game outside of the event campaign. In fact, if you look at all three of the event campaign options, the 1500 Lobby Crystals cost over twice as much as what the other two options combined would cost you. So Lobby, the reason it's so expensive is because there's only two routes to get it. When you open lockboxes, every lockbox you open will drop somewhere between 4 and 50 lobi. On average, it ends up being about 5.4 lobi per lockbox. And the other route is opening promotional packs. And every promo pack you open will either give you 10 lobi or the promo ship. So with either of those, it's very expensive to actually get 1500 lobi. You're looking at upwards of $300 without a sale going on. So pretty expensive compared to the other options. However, that doesn't mean that you should just immediately default to picking this because it's the most expensive. Lobi is nice and there are a lot of really neat items from the, the Lobi store, but the only people that I would recommend going for the Lobi are those of you that have really well-developed accounts. You already have lots of lockbox and promo ships and you're just wanting to go out and pick up some of the lobby items that cannot be acquired via the player exchange. There are a lot of lobby items that can be acquired at a fraction of the cost of what it would take to get the lobby to get them via the player exchange, most notably the lobby ships. These lobby ships, like the, the popular one here is the Kelvin Timeline Intel Dreadnought Cruiser, The Vengeance. That costs 900 lobi, and if you look at the, the math of what it takes to get 900 lobi, it's like 1.8 billion EC. Yet the Vengeance is on the exchange for 260 mil. So if you're wanting to get lobi items that you can get off the exchange, it makes sense to just get them off the exchange rather than using the lobi yourself to, to go through and get them. If you're getting the lobi, my recommendation is that you're getting the items that bind on pickup, which is a lot of these space sets, a lot of these ground sets. These things that bind on pickup are really where you should be looking at if you're looking at picking up the lobby. Again, if, you, if you're if you after things like lobby ships that can be acquired off the exchange, pick something else from the event campaign and grind up EC. Follow some of the EC guides out there and just grind the EC to buy them off the exchange because I, I think it'd be a waste to burn... 50, you know, 900 of that 1500 lobby on a, on a ship there. So if you're an end game player, I think it's a pretty good choice, but if you're a, like a new player or someone on a budget, it's probably going to be more impactful for you and your account to go with one of the other two prize options that are getting you a ship. So it's just my thoughts on the lobby. It's a good choice. You just have to, to know what you're getting into if you're going down the lobby route. Options with our, which are both for ships. I do just have to quickly remind all of you that there have been some meta changes over the past couple of months in the game. Back in June of 2023, Cryptic introduced the advanced consoles. There's two engineering variants and there's also two science ones. The existing Fleet Spire, Locator, and Exploiter consoles were also renamed to advanced. So the downside to these advanced consoles is that you can only have one profession of these things on at a time. So if you want to run the engineering advanced consoles, you can't run any of the advanced science consoles or the advanced tech ones at the same time, which means if you want to run the engineering ones, you have to give up your fleet spire locator and exploiter consoles, which is fine because there are there are alternatives out there. Now, the science consoles have not had much of an impact, but the two engineering ones are actually really good. And numbers wise, the isomag ones, which I'll show you here in a second, are actually beating out the locators and exploiters on some builds. So let's take a look at these things. And at the left is the hangar craft power transmission 
advanced engineering console. And the entire point of this thing is that it is boosting pets. And one of the main concerns I think a lot of you probably have with these advanced consoles is, you know, you're giving up your, your, your phaser buff, you know, going from the tack console to the engineering one. Well, that's not actually the case. You see, these advanced consoles can all get the damage modifiers that your TAC consoles had. So right here, you see that I have a Plasma one at the left and I have a Disruptor one at the right. And you can see that the buff that I'm getting here, this bottom line on the left one and the top line on the right, that is the same level of damage buff that you would be getting from a Fleet Spire console. So you're not actually losing the damage buff. You're basically, you're trading the crit chance or crit severity for the other effect that these advanced engineering consoles have. So for the hangar craft power transmission one here, um, this, each of these that you have on your build will buff your pet's torpedo damage by quite a bit. And all of these buffs on the, the hangar pet one will scale up as your hangar pets rank up. So once your pets are at rank five, they are doing quite a bit because they're getting a huge boost to their torpedo damage. They're getting a huge boost to their weapon power, and they're also getting a huge boost to how much max weapon power they can have. So this is a pretty substantial boost. And I did some testing a couple weeks back on, on one of my live streams where I ran seven of these hangar pet consoles on the D7 Merrick Worker flight deck carrier. Um, you could do the exact same thing on the, the Discovery Constitution Miracle Worker Flight Deck Carrier, but with seven of these hangar pet consoles on, it basically doubled the damage of my hangar pets. So these consoles are pretty good if you're a carrier player. You can slap a, each of your engineering console slots can be one of those advanced engineering consoles and even your universals. So I had seven of those consoles on that build and it was just really crazy. Now... I do just want to quickly note this plasma energy weapon damage here at the bottom. That is the, the modifier I have on. Um, and that would be phaser. If you had the phaser mod on disruptor, so on that is only boosting you not your pets, but the rest of the stuff here, this, all these bonus bonuses for your pets do stack up. So even that stacking max weapon power, if you wanted to run seven of these on a ship, your pets are getting the benefit from all seven consoles, even that max weapon power. And then the other advanced engineering console here is the isomagnetic plasma distribution manifold. This again, you can get a modifier to, to get the same damage buff as your spire consoles had. Yes, there is a phaser version. The, the phaser ones on the exchange are like 40, 50 mil right now. Um, they are pretty good. They give a weapon power bonus, but they also give a stacking max weapon power bonus. And this stacks, and this will also stack with things like override subsystem safeties. So if I go back in game here, if, look, if I go back to this D7, if we look at my power levels here, you know, right now with those hangar pet consoles, I'm at 125. If I go to my loadout here that has the isomags on it, you know, I'm, I'm at 176 weapon power just sitting here. So these advanced engineering consoles have really brought a lot of value to these engineering heavy ships like the discovery connie the the d7 merc worker flight deck carrier the ink worry there's a lot of these engineering heavy ships that used to be a bit of a joke but as of the advanced engineering consoles coming into the game they're actually insanely competitive against the more tack heavy ships that traditionally what you would have went to instead. So when we're looking at ships moving forward, you know, you don't have to worry about a ship having, you know, five engineering consoles because that can be as competitive as five TAC consoles with these new advanced engineering consoles. And if you want to learn how to, to get these things, I do have a video going over how to craft them and all that, which I'll have linked down below if you want to learn more. And I'm going to be doing some testing in a future video sometime here in August where I show at what point you would want to swap over to the isomags versus your spire consoles. So stay tuned for that. The second prize option is the two tier six coupons. This is for two of the 3000 Zen ships in the C store. The only 
restriction here is that the event version of the T6 coupons, the, the ones you get from the campaign, are not supposed to be usable on the ships listed in the new tab of the C store. However, Cryptic does not always actually implement that. It says it, but quite often the new ships that they release, you are in fact able to use these coupons on. So I'm not going to guarantee every ship's going to work like that, but there have been some recent ships like the Cyclone where people were apparently using the coupons from the event campaign to, to get it. So your mileage uh, will vary there. Now, the value of this prize option is $60 at the base cost. And if you're wanting to compare to what sales prices would be, Sea Store ships will every now and then go on a 20 to 25% sale which means that the value of this one is as low as $45. And if you're going through and completing the entire event completely free to play, if you're a free to play player that doesn't want to, you know, put money into the game, this is an incredibly good option. And the reason for that is that this is the only option from the event campaign that is giving you an account wide unlock. These T6 coupons are unlocking C store ships, and those C store ships can be claimed on every single character of your account. So, if you're a new player or someone that is, you know, free to play that doesn't want to put money in, then this is really good because you are able to to get some really nice boost ship wise for your entire account without putting money in. Now, if you're looking to buy the event out, this does not make any sense to me. If you're buying out one or two events, you're basically spending, if you would just spent that money, like buying the ships from the C store, you probably would have saved money. So if you're putting money into the event campaign, I'd probably avoid this because it just doesn't make much sense. But if you're going completely free to play, then this is a very good option. Now, there are a couple of Sea Store ships I'm going to recommend. Um, I have some best of lists that I want to work on here at some point. But in the meantime, some recent ships that I'd recommend, the Terran Hydra, that came out with the 13th anniversary bundle. That is an incredible ship for, for what it cost. That thing is better than quite a few of the lockbox and promo ships out there. And the fact that it's $30 in the Sea Store is pretty crazy for how good it is. It also has a console and trade on it that boosts pet builds. The next ship I'm going to recommend is the Bozeman. It is also a very good energy weapon platform, especially if you want to go and grind out the isomag consoles for it. The console on it is good, and the trait from it is also situationally good in some high-end builds. The next ship I'd recommend is the Gagarin. This has the Entwined Tactical Matrices trait, which is really good for a variety of builds. Quite often, when you, when you look at Sea Store recommendation videos, that is one of the top ships that gets recommended. And it's it's a good platform. The trait from it is really good. The next ship is going to be the Arbiter. Um, that is, there's a couple different ships that have the same trait. So the, the trait from it is Emergency Weapon Cycle. It's a really good trait to have on for energy weapons. It's been a core trait for, for those builds for a long time. For the next ship here, it's the Terran Eagle. The Terran Eagle is a really good torp platform. In fact, it recently took the, the, the top record for torp builds. So that is a $30 Sea Store ship that is beating out a lot of the, the more expensive like promo and lockbox torpedo platforms that myself and others have been using for, for a long time. So pretty good torpedo platform. And the console off of it is meta for, for torp builds. And then the other ship I have here is the Cardassian Flight Deck Carrier. That is a really nice budget carrier you can pick up. It also has a really good trade on it um, called Calm Before the Storm, which gives you some firing cycle haste and some cooldown reduction. And it's, it's a flight deck carrier. So that is a pretty solid carrier to use. The, the trade from it's good. So any of those ships there, you know, do, do a little bit of research, use the STO wiki, um, Take a look, see if the traits fit your build. And if you want some more ideas for some other Sea Store ships to consider in the meantime, you know, because it's probably going to be a little bit before I get my best of list out, um, Stow Better has a tier list with some recommendations, and I'll have that link down below if you want to check that out to get some more ideas. 
And the next prize option is the one that most of you want some input on, and that is the premium tier six ship. So this option will allow you to pick a single lockbox or promotional tier ship that was released before 2023, and you will get that ship for a single character. Now, I've seen a lot of comments about people seeing that the box is stating that it's bound to account, and that is just implying that you can move the event campaign box between your characters. It does not mean that the premium ship box is actually giving you an account wide ship. It doesn't work like that. You can move the box between the characters on your account, but once you get the ship from it, the only character that gets that ship is the character you open the box on. So just keep that in mind. I've seen a lot of confusion about that. Now, the value of the premium tier six ship option is going to vary quite a bit based on what ship you select. Some of the lockbox ships are as cheap as 400 million, and there are some that are as expensive as 1.5 billion. For promo ships, quite often they are above the exchange cap of 1.5 billion, so it's not uncommon for promo ships to, to go for like 1.7 to 1.8, depending on the demand at the time. So in this section, I'm not going to be focusing too much on ships from before 2022. I will quickly recap some of the, the good ones from prior years, but I'm mostly wanting to focus the discussion on the newer ships that have been introduced in the past year or some of the older ships that have gained value because of the, the change with the advanced engineering consoles. So chapters will be again listed down below for discussion about each of the ships I'm about to recommend. So I have a couple quick notes on some of my older recommendations from prior event campaigns. Pretty much all of those recommendations are still valid. Ships like the Crossfield Refit, the Deimos, the D7 Merrick Worker Flight Deck car Carrier, the Mir Constitution Warship, and the Styx are the ships I recommended last year. And they're all still as good as they were last year, and some of them even better, as I'll discuss in a minute. So I am going to have a video or a link down in the description below to my event campaign four video. If you want to see more discussion about those specific ships, because I've already talked about most of them in, in length in past videos. So if you want to learn more about those specific options, I'll refer you back to that discussion from last year in which I dove into the, the reasons to, to go after those ships like the the crossfield refit has the universal design trait the Deimos has the emulating phaser lance console the d7 merrick worker flight deck carrier has ruin of our enemies mirror warship has Terran goodbye and the sticks well that's just the best tanking platform but the sticks the value of that i guess technically has lowered since last year because the sticks is part of the 13th bundle now, so you can get it on account wide unlock for like 110 bucks. So keep that in mind. So for new ships or older ships to, to consider now due to the meta change, the, the D7 Mark Worker Flight Deck Carrier, I was already showing that off earlier in this video. Um, basically, with the advanced engineering consoles, the D7 Mark Worker Flight Deck Carrier can run up to seven of the advanced engineering consoles, which means you can either massively boost your pets up or your weapons for like a pure DPS min maxing. I think the isomags are still going to win out over the pet consoles, even though you can double your pet damage, your, your weapons, even once you fully deck out a carrier build, your weapons just blow way past what your pets can do. So I think the isomags would still be better on that ship, but if you wanted to boost the pets up, that ship can do either. The Inquiry is another ship to, to consider again due to the meta change. That thing can run up to seven of the Isomag consoles on it. And the Delkina. Uh, the Delkina is more of a tack focused ship, but it can run up to five Isomags. And that ship has been very versatile for a long time. It's a great torp platform. It's a great energy weapon platform. And with the Isomag stuff, I've been having a blast with it. That that has been the ship that I have been personally using as like my main ship on casual for the past couple of months. It's it's just a really incredible platform. It is a Romulan ship, so it does have a singularity core. Um, but to be honest, I just do not think the the power issues are that big of a deal currently. And I'll show you the Delkina real quick. 
as soon as I can find it here. So the Delkina, um, I've been running a plasma build on it, and eventually I'll be posting this build up on the channel. But the Delkina, it it does have one less engineering console than TAC consoles, so most of you might still want to run the Spire consoles on it. But the Isomag consoles do have a secondary benefit in that they are boosting some experimental weapons quite nicely. And if you're running traits like the complex plasma fire one, that does scale up with weapon power. So even on some of these more attack heavy ships, the Isomags can win out over locators or exploiters if your build has elements that are going to benefit more from that higher weapon power. And again, with the Isomag consoles, plus max stacking weapon power. And I don't think I showed this before, but I just want to verify and show you guys it does stack with OSS. So as you see there, just under 200 weapon power, and that's just, you know, sitting here in space. If I, if I uh, like, did OSS 3, I would have been over 200 weapon power there. So Isomag's crazy good, has made a lot of these older ships even better, and has definitely made the engineering heavy ships very competitive and moving over to the ships that are new to the event campaign premium ship boxes we have quite a few ships from 2022 so for those of you again that are new to the event campaigns the premium box that we got from event campaign 4 in 2022 would only let you choose the ships up through the end of 2021 and with event campaign five here in 2023, we have all of the premium ships that were released up through the end of 2022. So up on screen are the sh the premium ships that were released last year in 2022. And we, we had quite a few, but there's only a few that I think most of you are really going to have any interest in. So the first one here is the Terran Acheron Dreadnought Carrier. I was not a big fan of this platform, and I still am not a big fan of this ship, but I can't ignore that it is a carrier platform that I think at least some of you will be interested in. So the Terran Acheron is a 5-2 Dreadnought Carrier, so it does have two hangar bays, and with those two hangar bays, you do have the ability to use the Styx Terran Frigates. Those Styx Frigate Pets are really good from a support point of view, not necessarily the top damage-wise. They have Attack Pattern Beta on them, Fire at Will, and Suppression Barrage, so they're really good for going around and debuffing the things around you. For the ship itself, it has a Commander Tack with Temporal Operative. Let me zoom in on that for you. So Commander Tack with Temporal Operative, Lieutenant Tack, Lieutenant Commander Engineer, Lieutenant Commander Universal with Temporal Operative, and then an Ensign Universal. I think for, for those of you that like Beam Overload and you're looking for like a, a nice Beam Overload carrier platform, you know, the Terran Acheron might be something to look at. Personally, you know, I'm still not a big fan of this ship, but I think that there is a subset of players out there that would be interested in a 5-2 with two hangar bays, with five TAC consoles, four engineering, two science, that can do like a nice beam overload build with the, the temporal stuff to do recursive with it. I think there's definitely a subset of you out there that might be interested in a ship like this. So that that's definitely one to, to take a look at. Now, I do have the California on this list, and I think it's a bit of a meme, but... As an engineering heavy ship, and a miracle worker went at that also, the California can actually run seven isomag consoles on it. I don't think that the California is a good ship, but I know a lot of you are big fans of Lower Decks. I, I think Lower Decks has been a fantastic show, and I know a lot of you have been wanting to, to be able to run this ship. And those advanced engineering isomag consoles really make a ship like this pretty competitive. The, the downside is, though, is that this is a 4-4 ship, and it is still quite engineering heavy on the bridge officer side of things. 
you could do like a fire at will beam build on this or beam overload or even exceed rated limits if you want to try the miracle worker stuff you can get something on it that'll work just know it's not going to be super competitive but it does have the ability to run seven isomags so you could go pick up seven of the phaser isomags off the exchange or grind them and re-roll them uh you could do that and make this ship pack quite a punch with your beam rays it's not you know again it's not going to be super competitive dps wise but it'll do okay and for its bridge officer setup here commander engineer with miracle worker lieutenant commander engineer lieutenant commander uni with miracle worker lieutenant universal and ensign universal so not the best but it's sort of a meme option and i think many of you would be able to to make a really nice immersive build on a ship like that feel dirty even saying that like i i know triz is going to be in the comment section down below saying something okay so the next ship is the cheval temporal science spearhead this is a really good side tort platform that came out last year and another thing about the cheval is that it's a vulcan ship vulcan ships have been pretty rare in sto but the cheval is actually really good the downside is it's a promotional ship so it's it's very expensive to obtain but for those of you that have been wanting a vulcan ship that is like a really good end game science like cytort platform the cheval is pretty solid um i've been running mine as like a, a torp setup specifically i was using this to to do like side nuking and infected when we were doing split run still it's it's a good looking ship once I take the Borg stuff off of it. Like it, it is based on the lower decks of Vulcan ship that was shown in like season two, I think. But I, I think it looks good. And for those of you that have been, you know, just waiting a very long time for for a really good Vulcan ship in the game, this is legitimately a, a very good side tour platform. So uh for the stats here. 4-3 weapon setup, 3 engineering consoles, 4 science, 4 tack, and the bridge officer setup, commander science with temporal operative, lieutenant commander universal with command, lieutenant commander tack, ensign engineer, and lieutenant science. So you do have that forced lieutenant commander tack and the forced ensign engineer, but I think you can still do some, some nice things on this ship to, to make it quite effective. So for you Vulcan fans out there, definitely a ship to, to take a look at next up is the sagan command cruiser i think that this is a pretty good tank platform and you you could also set it up as a torque boat if you wanted um it also has a tank trade on it so let me swap over to it find it here It is somewhere on the list. I, I actually just have it named as the name of the ship. Okay. So with the, the sag in here, this thing has a 4-4 weapon setup. So again, it's, you know, pretty beam array heavy here. Um, it's got four engineering consoles, four science, three tack. So you still have the ability to run like five isomag consoles if you wanted to do that. Um, and with a tank platform like this, if you do want to do the isomags, the fleet colony protomatter consoles do still work alongside the advanced engineering ones. So keep that in mind. The trade off this ship is reverberant shielding. And the, what this does is when you use feedback pulls, it will grant you the same rank of reverse shield polarity as the feedback pulse. So if you hit feedback pulse two, you're going to get a reverse shield polarity too. And that goes in reverse also. When you hit reverse shield polarity, it'll give you the same rank of feedback pulse. So if you hit reverse shield polarity three, this will give you a feedback pulse three. So if you're running a tank setup where you're using reverse shield polarity a lot, this trait can be pretty good for that if you're doing a tank with that but i just have to to note that the current tanking meta doesn't even use reverse shield polarity much anymore rather what people do is they use um 
suppression barrage on these command ships because suppression barrage will just straight up lower the outgoing damage of your opponent. So rather than using reverse shield polarity, pretty much every modern high-end tank is running suppression barrage because the, the impact that has in content is just enormous. So the, the Sagan, I think, is a pretty good tanking platform. Um, it does also look pretty good, in my opinion. I, I'm not too focused, usually, on the looks of ships, but this was, like, the main ship for Season 2 of Star Trek Picard, and they did a lot of good work on the model for it. So if you're looking for a tank platform and something to mess around with that, this may be a ship to take a look at. And... The last of the new ships that I would recommend you take a look at is the Excelsior 2 Intel Heavy Cruiser. You guys that watch the stream know that this ship was going to be on this list. The Excelsior 2 is a really fun beam array platform, but what's also really nice about the Excelsior 2 is that it has a console on it that is really fun to use on beam array builds. And if I can find that ship, I will show you. It's a very immersive console. It basically spams out phaser beams from your ship. You can use the console on any ship also, so it will work on whatever you want to use it on. The, the console is the experimental power redirection, and I talked about this thing quite a bit when I reviewed the Excelsior 2, which I'll have linked down below too if you want to learn more about the ship. But this console, good passers on it, but the big thing is the clicky. The clicky does a nice bit of damage and it's really immersive with the phaser beams that it shoots out. So to show you guys the, the phaser beams on this thing, I am going to go into a patrol real quick. Okay, future Spencer here. I have better footage that I'm gonna show you guys from the review that I did for the Excelsior 2, which will be linked down below if you wanna learn more about the ship. Um, so. My weapons are not firing. The phaser beams that you see coming off of the, the ship here are entirely from the Excelsior 2 console. And then I decloak and I hit them. With just the console, my actual beams are not firing. This is just the console here. You see, as it's getting more kills, it fires faster and faster. So the point is, the Excelsior 2 console does have a very immersive set of visuals to it, and I think any of you that have used the Excelsior 2 console know exactly what I'm talking about. It's basically 15 seconds of beams just spewing out of your ship, and you can use it on any ship. You can use it on a Klingon ship if you want with a disruptor setup. Like, it doesn't matter. The console can be equipped on anything. It has its own integrated beams on it and it just spews phaser beams everywhere for 15 seconds. So really fun console to use, and the Excelsior 2 overall I thought was a pretty good platform, even for being a 4-4 ship. And before I get to my top recommendation list here at the end, I do just want to mention what I'm going to be picking from the event campaign myself this year. So just some history. In 2021, I ended up picking up the Section 31 Command Heavy Battle Cruiser. There was a lot of hype around that ship a couple of years ago, and I got it, tried it out, and then almost immediately hated it. The Section 31 Command Heavy Battle Cruiser to this day has a bug on it with the hitbox in which if you're moving around the map with the swarm mode active, your hitbox will just slowly get bigger. And in Infected, what we were experiencing is that this ship would have a hitbox like 20 kilometers across. So that was an annoying issue. In 2022, I ended up picking up the Durgath, which is the KDF version of the Enterprise J. I like how the Durgath looks versus the Enterprise J. And I already had the Enterprise J on a different character and I had the Romulan version on another character. So I, I just wanted to, to get that to, to have all the variants of the Enterprise J across my account. And I did use that for a build stream at some point, which I'll have linked in the description if you want to check that out. And for 2023, I'm honestly still just sort of torn between two ships. I 
have a new character that I'm using for DPS stuff as of the like the a year or two ago, and that character doesn't have all of the ships that my old main had. And the issue is, is that I've gotten a lot of new things on this new character. So either way, getting the, the new stuff on the old character is going to be expensive or getting the, the old ships on the new character, you know, it's going to be expensive. So I'm, I'm torn between the Vodwar Juggernaut and the Inquiry for my casual Sab character. Both of them are really good energy weapon platforms. The, the Vodwar Juggernaut is the one that is more expensive between the two. Both of them are promo ships, but the Inquiry has been in the Lobby store before. So I think I'm going to go with the Vodwar Juggernaut and just hope that eventually they put the Inquiry back into the Lobby store for, for a weekend so I can get it that way. So the Vodwar Juggernaut is what I'm going to go with. And just to, to show, I am on casual right now. I am on live. I am going to open the premium T6 choice pack and my choice is going to be the Vodwar America Worker Juggernaut, except there we go. So that was my choice. That was on live and I'm just glad OBS didn't mess up the recording. So overall, my recommendations for the event campaign, the, the number one option, the number one option is that if you are not sure of what exactly you want right now, put the box in your bank until you know for sure what you want. There's no need to, to rush out and use the event campaign box. They don't expire. They also don't update in, in your bank. So if you put this in your bank, it's going to have the same ship selection in it five years from now as it has today. But the point is, don't feel pressured into rushing to choose something. Take your time and make sure that whatever you're getting from it is going to actually be something that is beneficial for you. So patience is always key in this game and taking your time to, to go through and make sure that you make the right decision is the best decision you can make. Now, outside of that, the other ships here, I initially was thinking of doing like a top 10 list, but honestly, Every single one of these ships here is good for one reason or another, that there is no best option. All of these have their own unique value that is going to make them more or less valuable for, for each of you out there. I, I think the D7 Merrick Worker Flight Deck Carrier, I think the trait from that is good. The platform is good, especially with the Isomag stuff. Um, and I don't remember if I mentioned this earlier, but with the D7 Merrick Worker Flight Deck Carrier, if you guys really want a fed carrier that is similar to the D7, the Discovery Constitution, the, the America Worker one, is literally the same ship as the D7. It just doesn't get a battle cloak and it doesn't have the same trait. So if you're looking for a fed, like a fed option that can work as a carrier that looks, you know, a bit more immersive for you, then the, the Disco Connie, you know, can do the same stuff. It just doesn't have the as good of accessories on it. The Excelsior 2, I think, has an immersive phaser console. Whether or not that's worth it is entirely up to you. I think most of you that have gotten the Excelsior 2 and use that console have had a blast with it. I think if you like phaser beams, that Excelsior 2 console is just super fun to use. The Mere Warship, that is a pretty old ship at this point, but the trait from it is still incredibly good. The platform is still pretty good. Crossfield refit, the universal design trait from that, still meta. The Deimos, the emulating phaser lance is still good, and it's still a good PvP ship. The Vodwar Juggernaut, the trait's good, the platform's good, the Inquiry, good platform, the Delkina, good platform. Like, all of these ships are good in their own way, and if you want to dive into the stats of any of them in a bit more detail. I will have all of the wiki links down below. If there's you know anything I miss when talking about the stats, you can just look there and see it there. So, you know, let me know what you guys think. I, I know this isn't probably the, the top five list that some of you were hoping for, but I, I think it's really hard to do top five because all these different ships, they're, they're good, you know, equally in their own way. So I, I think all of them, have something of value to, to bring to your build. And 
if you're on PC again, you know, try to take advantage of Tribble. Try to, to take advantage of that and see if any of them, you know, really, really boost your play style up a bit to at a noticeable level. So hopefully this helps. Hopefully this helps some of you that have been debating which way to go. I know my, my lack of a top five list probably doesn't help some of you. If you have any questions or comments, you know, feel free to drop them down below. But that is going to be it for this video so that I can get it out while it is still Friday because it is a bit late here. So I'm going to get this rendered real quick and get this up for you guys. And make sure to join the Discord too if you have any questions. You know, feel free to, to ask over there and myself or someone else can get back to you a bit quicker than the YouTube comments. Thank you all for tuning in. And again, thank you to all channel members and viewers for the continued support. Uh, Dima. I see you just joined as I was recording this, so I don't have you on the list yet, but uh, thank you for, for the, the membership also. That's going to be it for today. See you guys around.